Hi, I'm Rav Leo, and I'm a rabbi and a public health graduate. I'd like to tell you about a conflict that I have being a rabbi and also in public health. And it comes down to the value of human life. Let me explain. In Judaism, the rabbis explain that someone who saves one life, it's like they save the whole world. And they learned this from Adam and Eve, they learned this from Noah and his wife. They rebuilt the whole world just from one, two individuals. And therefore we see that one person has infinite possibilities, they're made in the image of God, and therefore they are incredible and they contain the potential to rebuild the whole world. However, within public health, there's a concept of an average life. What is an average life? An average life is, in the West, probably about 80 years. And someone who is uh, elderly has a smaller average life expectancy. And someone who is younger has a longer life expectancy. So we see this a sort of conflict occurring between rabbinics um, and public health. In public health, there's a limit to how much one can afford to spend to save a life. And therefore, there's always, with a fixed budget, a question of triage. Triage is when two people come in for treatment and you only have a fixed amount of money to spend. And you have to decide who you're going to treat. Do you treat the baby with the heart defect who potentially has 80 years of life ahead of them? Or would you treat with the same limited amount of funds, the 95-year-old who comes in with a similar heart defect, which costs about the same amount of money to fix, but has perhaps another year or so uh, to live? And of course, public health has grown on the basis that one has to look at the benefit to society, the number of years that one is saving with the investment of the money. And there's a limit to how much public health authorities are able to spend to save one life. And it's typically up to about $2 million. Often it's less than that, but up to a maximum of $2 million for each life. And that typically would be spent on a young life because that would be the greatest sort of bang for your buck, the most amount of years that you could save with the money. And so we come to the corona crisis. And we see that sadly, a lot of the people who are being affected are in their last years of life. And when we report the number of deaths from the crisis, we report them as individual lives. We don't differentiate between an older person or a younger person. And from a religious perspective, that's quite natural because every life is equally valuable. A person of 95 has huge amounts of experience and wonderful uh, things to offer to other generations. And their life is invaluable and there's no way of putting any value on it. It's, it's worth billions of dollars. Uh, in the same way that a child, a child's life is invaluable as well. Therefore, how can we differentiate between the, between the two? And so when we report 10,000 deaths, which is a terrible number in a particular country, we report 10,000 deaths, we don't differentiate between one and the other because as religious people, we see that life is infinitely valuable. There's no way of differentiating between one life or the other. But for public health of, uh, officials, they would look at this very differently. They would say, well, those 10,000 deaths were mostly 90-year-olds, 80-year-olds, and so forth, with five years left in their life, 10 years left in their life. In fact, if you looked at average lives lost in those 10,000, they probably equate to nearer 1,000 full lives uh, rather than 10,000. And that would be a way that public health authorities would be able to look at those numbers and decide how much they could afford to spend to save those lives. And if you say that there's two million dollars per life and a thousand lives uh, that are to be saved, average lives, that gives you a budget of about two billion dollars, which is a lot of money, to save those lives. But what we see today is that there are countries that have 10,000 expected deaths, which, as we say, are a thousand average lives lost. And they're not spending two billion dollars, but they're spending 20 billion dollars or 200 billion dollars or sometimes two trillion dollars in order to save those lives. And it's not to say that that money is unreasonable because, as we say, every life is infinitely valuable. And as individuals, we would like to spend all our money to save one life. But the question is for society, whether society can afford this. As a rabbi, I'm also aware of another law in uh, Jewish tradition. And this is sadly in the case of ransoming hostages. You see, 2,000 years ago, it wasn't uncommon for uh, people to uh, kidnap Jews and to ransom them against the communities. 
and the communities had to decide how much they could afford to pay to buy back those uh, members of their community from those who kidnapped them. And often it was a lot of money. And so the rabbis made a decision that it would be forbidden for any community to ransom a hostage, to pay money to get a hostage back more than their worth. What's their worth? Perhaps the worth as a slave, a basic value of a human life. Let's say today maybe $2 million uh, would have been the figure um, as we use in public health. The reason that the rabbis made this decision to limit the amount that the community could spend on ransoming hostage, even though it's the greatest commandment for Jews to save life, and saving a hostage was definitely saving their life. The reason was because if one were to spend more than the value of that person to society, then society would become bankrupt. There'd be no money for schools, and there'd be no money for hospitals, and there'd be no money for anything in the future. The whole society would collapse, and that would be the end of the whole community. And so they always had to make a decision between the value of the individuals in trouble and the amount that society could actually spend, in a similar way to the public health uh, budget per life saved. And we see this also in the Torah itself. It tells us about somebody who donates their whole value to the temple and actually goes through the value of each human being that they would have to pay if they had promised to give their value to the temple. And it differentiates between people of different ages, obviously those who are younger worth generally more than the working age. But what we see is that actually um, the concept of valuing the human life even appears in the Torah itself. And so we have this conflict. How do we value how much we can spend as a society in this particular crisis? And I don't have the answer. As a rabbi, I would say, let's spend every penny in our coffers, let's save every possible life, and let's not differentiate between an old person and a young person, let's save their lives. As a public health graduate, I would say, we must look at the maximum amount of money we can afford to spend per person, uh, which is about $2 million, and that's for 80 years of expected life. We have to prorata that if somebody is much older and we can't afford to spend that money. So I leave it up to you. What is it? Is it infinite? Is it limited? How much can we afford to spend as a society? Thank you for listening to me.